Hello and welcome to today's episode of Hollett Kenyon Science on bacteria. Today we're going to be talking about um, the information covered in standard C4 mm -hmm. and this is being able to identify the unifying characteristics of bacteria and also to be able to give examples of the diversity and also of the beneficial role of different types of bacteria. So, an overview of today's lesson. First, we're going to start by talking about the unifying characteristics of all bacteria. So these are just things that are common to all different types of bacteria. Then we're going to move into the general ways of grouping bacteria together into different um, groups. And finally, we're going to talk about what nutrients do bacteria need to survive. So before we start, I just want to go over some bacteria vocabulary. So we've talked a little bit already about what the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells are. So bacteria are considered to be prokaryotic. And what this term really means is prokaryotic um, just means that they are single-celled organisms, right? And they have organelles, but their organelles do not have membranes. So we're going to go into this in a little more detail in the next few slides. Also, bacteria have what's called a nucleoid region. So unlike eukaryotic cells, bacteria do not have nucleuses or nuclei, as we would say, but they do still have genetic material, and this material is contained in the nucleoid region. Next, to go on to some more terminology, now you've seen these words before, heterotrophic and autotrophic just refer to how organisms get their different organic nutrients. So heterotrophic means that organisms need to get their or organic nutrients from somewhere in the environment, whereas autotrophic can actually produce their own organic nutrients. So an example of this would be like plants. So there's different types of um, those for bacteria as well. We're also going to talk about the difference between aerobic and anaerobic and this has to do with oxygen and whether or not organisms need oxygen to survive or not. All right so going back to our overview we're going to start with the unifying characteristics of bacteria. Firstly all bacteria are prokaryotic. This means as I just said that they are single cellular and they only have organelles that lack membranes. So they have, none of their organelles have membranes within them. So if we look at this example of a bacterial cell here, you're going to be able to see that it does have some organelles. And we'll talk in a second about what some of these could be. And an example of those would be the ribosomes. So bacteria, like eukaryotic cells, also have ribosomes, right, which are needed for protein synthesis. Um, but all the, all the organelles that you see here, here are lacking membranes, right? So there are no membranes in bacteria other than the actual membrane of the bacteria, the cell membrane that surrounds the whole bacteria. And this is different from, for example, this eukaryotic cell here, which is in this case an animal cell. And this cell here has a lot of organelles, such as um, this mitochondria here and also things like the uh, nucleus. And the thing that these all have in common is that they are membrane-bound organelles. So these are only found in eukaryotic cells, whereas prokaryotic cells like bacteria do not have uh, mem membrane-bound organelles. They are lacking those. Next, bacteria are very small. We've talked about this a fair bit already, and um, you've kind of got an introduction to this in the bacteria lab that we've done. But with a light microscope, even on the highest magnification, bacteria are only barely visible. So um, their size ranges from anywhere from about one micrometer, or also called one micron, um, to at most, the largest they get is about five micrometers in diameter. So overall, these are very, very small cells. And they're much smaller than, for example, a eukaryotic plant or animal cell would be. And just as a frame of reference, one micrometer or one micron is equal to about one hundred thousandth of a meter. So this is a very small unit of measurement. 
All right, let's move on. So the main parts of a bacterial cell. Bacteria have a cell wall, and their cell wall is a little different than the cell wall that's going to be found in plants, and we'll talk a little bit about the structure of that later on in this class. Um, they also have a cell membrane, and like we talked about earlier in the vocabulary, they have what's called the nucleoid region. And this is the region in the cell, in the bacteria cell, that contains the genetic material. So they do not have distinct organelles that are bound by mem membranes, um, remember, but they do have this nucleoid region which contains the genetic material which can be in the form of a plasmid or of a chromosome. So these are both just ways of storing the genetic material. And bacteria, um, like all living cells, have ribosomes. And remember, ribosomes are very important for the production of proteins, as we talked about in our genetics unit. So just as a quick recap and visual here, we have the uh, ribosomes, which are these small organelles here, and they are dotted throughout the cell. Um, this entire region here would be considered the nucleoid region. So unlike in, pro and sorry, unlike in eukaryotic cells where the genetic material is contained within the nucleus, this is kind of free-floating in a cell, but it is kind of clustered together in a region that we call the nucleoid region. Sorry for my poor penmanship there. All right, so uh, we also have the cell membrane, which is also sometimes called the plasma membrane. And this is found underneath the uh, cell wall. So the cell wall is on the exterior of the cell membrane, and the cell wall is more rigid and provides more support to the bacteria cell. All right, so bacteria can respond to their environment. So remember that one of the main criteria of an organism being alive is that they can respond to their environment. So there's a few ways that bacteria can do this. One is they can attach to other cells, and they can do this with chemical structures called pili. And another way is that they can move around in their environment, and they do this with structures called flagella. And if we look at this diagram here, First, let's talk about the pili. So the pili are these projections here, and these are just chemicals um, that allow bacteria to attach to perhaps other bacteria um, or to other things. And this allows them, um, helps them when they need to take up nutrients. It also is useful when bacteria need to reproduce. So some bacteria can reproduce um, sexually. Um, and then for movement, uh, this structure here, this flagella, or actually I should say a single, a single flagella is called a flagellum, so a U-M on the end, and multiple flagella, um, we, we put the A on, the A is um, the Latin plural. But basically it's this tail-like structure which can be waved around and actually allows the bacteria to move around in its environment. 